what's going on Island Hoppers. Today we're coming to you from San Miguel Dende. Let's do this. San Miguel de Adende is a town located in the eastern part of Guanajuato. Now it sits about 170 miles northwest of Mexico City and 60 miles west of Quiatro. This town is actually one of Mexico's most popular destinations for expats, people who want to resettle and live here in San Miguel de Allende. In this travel guide, we're going to go up above some of the lookout points, go in some of the cathedrals and show you what it looks like in here, and also tell you some of the history about this place right here. Also, don't forget, we are going through the heart of Mexico here, so there's going to be a couple towns coming up, including Guanajuato, and then we head down to the coast to Zihuatanejo, so we're going to show you a lot around Mexico. If you love Mexico, definitely watch those other videos, but also consider hitting the like button if you guys enjoy videos like this. Let's keep going. This area we're walking around here is known as the Garden of Viende. Now, this area here is known for its Gothic cathedrals, the church, and the area around here is very historical, known worldwide as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Much of this town's old colonial feel is still intact. As you can see with the rock road right here that we're walking on and the sidewalk, as well as the colorful buildings and the boutiques on either side. So San Miguel de Adende has a population of 135,000 people in the metro area. It also is home to many expatriates. About 8,000 Canadians and Americans live right here. Main reason that they come here and they're attracted is because of the colonial past and the architecture that still exists and is fairly well preserved right here. And in case you're wondering why it has such a unique name, well, it takes its name after two people. The 16th century friar, Juan de San Miguel, and a Mexican martyr named Ignacio Allende. So that's why it has the long name, because it's named after two historical figures in the 16th century from Mexico's. Just a quick history on the area here. It was originally set up and founded by the Spanish because of a silver mine that was nearby. The indigenous people had already had a civilization that existed here and a dispute broke out over who was going to do the work because the Spanish were trying to force the indigenous people to work the mines. But there was also a squabble over water. Now because of the squabble that they were having between the Spanish and the indigenous, it forced the Spanish to move outside of the original settlement and build out here with a military outpost and a mission. So when you're walking around this town, you're basically in an old military fort and a old mission for the Spanish. But nowadays, the modern community is very diverse, including the expats, the Mexican people who are originally from here, and in terms of safety, it is one of Mexico's safest places, although there are security and police that do patrol the streets to make sure it stays that way. Now it's also important to mention the colonial period that was here because it was the silver and the route between Guanajuato and Zacatecas that had the major road going through San Miguel on the way to Mexico City. So the Viceroy of Mexico City had actually granted several Spanish land and cattle uh, privileges in this area to encourage more people to move here and settle the area. Ultimately, over time, the indigenous and the Spaniards would get along and that relationship would create this cultural fusion that really makes San Miguel so special because the two cultures combined to really create this really special experience that you get. Uh, it's very culturally rich and amazingly beautiful.
San Miguel sets at an elevation of 6,300 feet. That's pretty high up there. That's over a mile high. So when you're walking around here, you may notice you're short of breath. But here's something else that's really interesting to know. At one point in time, San Miguel de Allende was about to become a ghost town. And then uh, that happened because of a plague or a pandemic. So it wiped this place out nearly, but then uh, it had a resurgence and UNESCO, the World Heritage Site, got a hold of this town in the 1990s. And since then, it's just been a boom town. Isn't that interesting to hear that this was once considered a ghost town nearly because of that pandemic that, that swept through here? I must say, of all of the places I've been around the world for historical uh, reference and culture, this town is up there among some of the greatest. I would compare it to the likes of Firenze in Italy, as well as some of the towns in the Cinque Terre, as well as several places across Spain. In fact, probably better than most places in Spain. Just in case you're curious, two sister cities or brother cities of San Miguel de Adende is St. Augustine, Florida and Santa Fe, New Mexico. As I was walking around here, I was definitely thinking, wow, this place reminds me of Santa Fe, New Mexico. In case you're wondering how this place got discovered or became popular, it was because foreign art students arrived here from overseas and then they set up art institutions. And the reason that they were attracted to this place was because they noticed so many buildings that were well preserved from the old colonial past. Once they saw it, they laid eyes on it. They said, this place is really special. Similar to what we saw in Antigua, Guatemala. So here we are in San Miguel at the Mirador, looking down into the city center. Looks like Florence, Italy, if you ask me, doesn't it? Well, I guess the only thing that's missing is the Arno River. From here, you can see the old bullfighting arena, which actually today, I don't know if it's still operational, but you can also check out a rodeo there. You know, one thing I'd say about safety, I've noticed here, this place has more cops than anywhere I've seen in Mexico so far. More than I saw in Mexico City, more than I've seen in Cancun. There's a lot of police uh, walking around and driving around here. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that makes it safer or less safe, but there's lots of police here. So here we are at the mansion, San Miguel de Allende. That's what it's called. It's $200 a night, but look at how beautiful this place is. This town has so many different unique roads that you can go up and down. Uh, there's Bougainvillea vines just creeping into the roads. I could see why so many people want to live here. Literally, every corner, every avenida, every calle, beautiful.
right, so we're gonna go inside the pork belly tacos and cocktails right now. Let's go get some food. So I got some pork belly tacos. Yeah, so as you can hear, the nighttime really goes off and lights up. Beautiful time in San Miguel de Dende is the evening, as you can see and hear. So I was just walking down the street and I came across this House of Blues by Dean Martin and it looked really cool. Let's go inside. Hey. Hey. Salud amigos. I got the House Reposado Margarita. I had a good time at that bar. I bumped into locals and many expats and tourists from all around. So it's a nice fusion of people from all over. The owner is really friendly. Uh, the drinks were good. So I do recommend that place. Anyway, let's just show you guys around the accommodation that we stayed at. This was about 65 to $70 per night. We got two rooms here. Uh, you can see it's really a nice boutique hotel. I got it on hotels.com. All right, guys, that concludes San Miguel de Allende. We'll see you on the next one.